So, Jamaica is a racing game about some pirates racing around the island of Jamaica. Um, it's got this kind of interesting historical aspect in that all of the characters you can play are um, actual pirates, and the rulebook gives you a little um, backstory about the pirates and talks about who they were and why they were a big deal at the time. Um, the setting of the game is that uh, Captain Morgan has become the governor of Jamaica, and he invites all of his pirate buddies to come hang out and live a life of wild piratude, and then 30 years after that event, they celebrate um, the anniversary, I guess, by having a race around the island. And so in this game, it's this kind of um, programmable action uh, race game where you have a hand of cards and you play a card that dictates what actions you're going to take and you take them, and it's a race to the finish. Um, so, uh, let's go ahead and pop it open and show you what's inside. Alright, so let's start out by looking at, uh, what comes in the box. The Jamaica is an interesting experience when you go to open it, you know, the, uh, the outside it looks like a treasure chest and that's kind of cool and then you open it up. And there you've got the rule book that looks like some doubloons, you pull that out of the way. And you got the board, which you pull out of the way. And you've got this nice, um insert that's got a slot for everything that comes in the game. Uh, you've got slots for your ships up there at the top. You've got the dice over here. You've got three component days for each of the three types of resources in the game. Uh, you've got the hold, player hold boards that you would pick up and pull out there. And underneath you've got uh, the captain marker that you'll pass around forever to the first player. And then you've got some treasure tokens down here, and you've got the player cards in this slot here. And as you can see that they come in, each player is going to get to choose what pirate they want to be, if they want to be Anne Bonny, or John Rackham, or Olivier Lavassu, or Samuel Bellamy, or Mary Reed, or Edward Drummond. Um, so you got all those cards, and then you've got these treasure cards down here underneath all of that. So, the insert is pretty well laid out um, in that it gives you a slot for everything. It probably won't work if you are looking to sleeve these cards. I mean, they might fit, but I don't really know that they would. And not only that, but they're a strange shape. Um, I don't know if these are uh, normal tarot size card or if they're just kind of a weird unique shape. Uh, so that's something to consider that you might not be able to sleeve them and keep them inside this insert, as is the case with many games that give you a custom insert. Um, the other thing to be aware of is that this game is not necessarily uh, very, I would call it, tilt friendly. Um, if you pick up the box and turn it on its side, or move it around at all, it's pretty likely that components are going to get jostled around, the ships will probably fall out of their bays, um, the um, three compartments at the bottom might get mixed together, uh, the cards at least will stay in place because they've got you know those boards on top of them and they're probably not going to go anywhere, but that is a thing to consider that it looks really nice, but it does have some drawbacks in this. If you uh, don't put things inside bags inside the insert, they probably will get moved around. But anyway, that's what comes with the game. So, starting out for setup, uh, one of the first things you're going to want to do is you're going to want to find these little treasure chest tokens. Um, you'll notice on the board that there are a bunch of uh, rock formations that look like skulls. And everywhere you see one of those, you're going to put one of these treasure tokens out. Uh, these are these sort of pirate layers. Uh, that can be found all around the islands, and what this signifies is that if you ever stop in that location, you'll be able to get a treasure. Um, it works out that there are a number of tokens equal to number of spaces on the board, so that's that. You'll put those down. Um, going along with those, you've got these treasure chest cards. Um, the base game comes with 12, and there's a mini expansion that adds a few more. 
what you're going to do is you're going to shuffle up the treasure cards and you're going to randomly remove three of them uh, from the base game. Obviously, if you've got the expansion, you remove uh, X number of them so you have nine because you want to have one for each of the possible locations on the board. So by pulling three out of the game, that's going to make it so people don't know exactly what they'll find at those treasure spaces. Um, so now you've got your treasures, and whenever someone stops in one of those locations, they'll pick up the treasure. Um, and we'll talk about those in a minute. Uh, you got your dice. Uh, you can kind of just have them there. You'll be grabbing them and moving around. Technically, it tells you to put this combat die here on this space, but who cares? Just put it wherever. Um, you're going to want to give everybody player hold. Um, this is where you're going to keep your stuff in your personal ship. So everybody's going to get one of those. Um, give everybody a set of player cards in their color and their ship. So say we've got the blue player here. He's going to put a ship on the Port Royal space. That's where everybody's going to start. And you're going to give him all of the Samuel Bellamy cards. They all have the same backing on them. Um, they all have different stuff on the front. Um, every player is going to shuffle up their cards and they're going to draw three um, and throughout the game you're going to have a hand of three cards pretty much at all times you play a card on your turn and then you draw a new card uh, with the exception of if you have a special that lets you hold four cards in your hand uh, so everybody's going to have a hand of three cards and they're randomized and you throw them on the table like that. Uh, so, we put the other players out there. Let's pretend that I've given them all holds and their cards as well. Um, randomly determine a start player and give them this big token. Um, let's just say whoever wants it most can have it. Um, this person is the captain and they are going to start the game. Whoever the captain is is going to um, start the round and the captain rotates every round. Uh, and then you want to give everybody three pieces of food to put in one of their holds. It has to be in one hold, you can't spread it out across multiple holds. And three doubloons. Put them in another hold. They can't go in the same hold. We'll talk about holds in a second, but uh, this is what set up for one player would be. They've got, you know, they've got their food, they've got their doubloons, they've got their cards, and this is the captain. And you're ready to go. Okay, so this is how a round of Jamaica is going to progress. Uh, you're going to do these actions every time. Uh, it starts out by whoever the captain is, remember that's the guy who's got this token, is going to roll the dice. The two six-sided dice, not this die. These two dice. Roll them, and in this case it doesn't matter because I rolled the same thing, they'll go here and here, and uh, normally I'd have to make a decision, but because I rolled the same thing, they just go in those slots. I'll talk about what those slots mean in a second, but that's the first thing you do on a round. The captain rolls the dice, they decide what order they want the dice to be in, they put them there. Um, then all the players will simultaneously uh, choose one of the three cards in their hand, and they will um, select one of them to put into play. So, blue does that, green does that, yellow does that, red does that. And once everybody has put down a card and nobody sees what they are, you start resolving them starting with the captain. Um, this is going to be the next thing you do. So, uh, the captain played gold and gold. Um, so there are five different types of actions in the game, basically. Uh, whatever, every card in the game has uh, a morning and an evening action, here and here, and everything that you're capable of doing in the game is going to be a combination of those things. You can move forward, which is a green arrow, move backward, which is a red arrow, you can pick up doubloons, food, or gunpowder, and that's what you're going to see on your cards in the game. Now, the order of the dice up here is going to affect how much you can do the thing that's on the cards. In this case, it doesn't matter because they're both threes. So, uh, what's going to happen is you resolve your morning action completely, and then you resolve your evening action completely. So, 
Captain's a blue player. He's not going to move anywhere. He's just going to pick up three doubloons. He's going to pick up three doubloons, put them in a hold. And he's going to pick up three more doubloons, put them in another hold. Um, the way the holds work, you see you've got five slots here. And as long as you've got an empty slot, whenever you pick up a thing, you put it in that empty slot. Um, as soon as you've filled up your five holds, you have to discard something if you take on a new thing. You can never replace the thing that you are getting rid of with a thing you're picking up. So if I picked up more doubloons, I can't dump these doubloons to put in more doubloons in the same hold. Um, that seems kind of bizarre and counterintuitive, but that's how it is. So, uh, note that the captain did uh, picking up doubloons and picking up doubloons. He does not get to combine those and take six doubloons and put them in one hold. He has to put the two sets of three in different holds. That's how it works. Um, the captain finished that, he's done, he discards that card, it's resolved, let's move on to the red player who's next. He's going to move forward and then move backward, which seems like a silly thing to play, but that's what he's doing. Uh, here's movement, you go one, two, three. Uh, if you look on the board, there's going to be these little square spaces in a lot of locations, and what those mean are you have to pay that number of food to stay on that space when you resolve movement there. So red would have to take, and say this is his hold even though it's not, he would have to take two of his food counters and discard them to stay there. And then he would move on to his evening action, which is to move back three and right back where he started. So he accomplished absolutely nothing. That was a terrible play, but that shows you how forward movement and backward movement works. So that's great. Um, Normally, when you move on to the same space as another player, it creates combat. Um, and you have to resolve that immediately before you deal with paying for cost of things. Um, however, there is no combat allowed on the Port Royal space where everybody starts. So just because Red moved off and came back doesn't mean that he has to pick a fight with anyone. He just moves right back to where he came from. Um, if you ever move on to a space with multiple players, you choose which one you're going to fight. Uh, but we'll talk about combat in a minute. So... That was Red's turn. It was a terrible turn, but that's what he did. Maybe he was just trying to get rid of that card. Maybe he had nothing better to do. Who knows? So he discards that card. It's out of here. Yellow goes. Yellow's going to move forward and pick up food. So Yellow's going to do a much more sensible thing of going one, two, three, paying two food, and say they have the food to pay for that. And then they are going to pick up three food. So they spent two, so they'd have one more in their hold, but then they gain three so it worked, it worked out for them, and now they're further ahead on the track. Uh, that's the end of Yellow's turn. Green didn't move at all. All he chose to do was pick up gunpowder and then gold. So say that this is what his hold looked like when he chose to do that. So he started by having to pick up this gunpowder. No, his holds are all full, so he'd have to discard a thing to take that gunpowder. So he gets rid of this food and puts down gunpowder. And then he's got to pick up doubloons. Like I said before... He can't replace doubloons with doubloons. He'd have to dump either the gunpowder or the food, like so. And remember, everybody has their own personal hold, and this isn't, you know, I'm just using one hold as an example rather than dealing with, you know, multiple holds all over the place just for the purposes of keeping things moving along. Okay, so once everybody has taken their actions, the captain marker passes over to the person the next person over, and that person's now the captain. Uh, everybody draws back up to three cards. Uh, the captain rolls the dice, and uh, this time, because I have two different things, the captain would put one thing in one slot and one in the other. They get to choose what order they go in. That's the power of being the first player that turn. Um, and that's uh, how the game progresses. Okay, so we're moving on to the next round, and let's say that uh, Green is the captain, and he chose to play this card, which is going to be move forward and move forward. He's going to move forward four and then two. So first, he's going to go one, two, three, four, and this puts him at one of these pirate co spaces. And whenever you land on one of the spaces with a token, you're going to take it, remove it from the game, 
so that other players when they land on that space won't also get to do this. And then you draw the top card off of the treasure deck. Um, and now is as good a time as any to talk about the treasures that are in the treasure deck. So, in the treasure deck you're going to have four special cards, which happen to be these ones right here. And then you're going to have some amount of positive treasure cards and negative cursed treasures. If you draw either of these types of cards, you're going to keep them secret and you know, you take it and put it face down. At the end of the game, any positive treasure is going to be worth that number in points, and any negative treasure is going to take away that many points from you. The reason why you make these secret is because of the way you resolve combat. Whenever you win combat, you get to take something from the player who lost. Uh, you can either take something from their hold, or you can take one of their treasures. And so when you went to take a treasure, you don't know which one of these is the positive, which is the negative. You don't know what they are at all, because as soon as someone drew it, it's face down. Um, so you take this and go, oh, well, garbage. Now I'm going to lose four points. Now I've got this cursed treasure in front of me kind of thing. So whenever you take a treasure that's got this kind of element of um, hidden information going on, however, if it's one of these four special cards, then that means that those are going to be flipped face up and kept next to your hold. They give you a special ability. Um, this one will let you have four cards in your hand at a time instead of three. Uh, this one is going to add a plus two modifier to your combat, and we haven't talked about combat yet. This one's going to give you a sixth hold, which is pretty cool because that means that you know now you can hold six different things. Um, and this one is going to allow you to reroll your combat die or make uh, your opponent reroll their die. Um, when you do that, the second result has to be accepted. So those are the four special ability cards. And um, someone can steal a face-up special ability card just like they could a face-down treasure card. Again, I'm going to talk about that when I get to combat, but that's what the treasures are that you'll see. So, Green landed on this Pirate Cove. He gets a treasure card at random. Um, so, you just got that. And remember, we removed some of these at the start of the game, so it's a bit randomized what is in the game. You could end up with a disproportionate amount of Cursed treasures in your game just through random chance at the start. Um, so, uh, all of these Pirate Cove spaces have no movement cost on them, so you can land on there and stay there and you're safe. Uh, so now Green would resolve their second action would be to move forward again. He's going to move forward two, which puts him at this space here. Anytime you're in a zone with the little... Um, yellow circled number, that means that you have to pay that amount at the port to stay on that space. Um, so green would have to go one, two, three, four, five, and dump their money like this. Um, however, for sake of example, let's say that green's hold looked like that when he landed on that space. Clearly he does not have five dollars. So he would not be able to stay on the space, he have to move back doesn't have three dollars, so you can't stay on this space, so you have to move back again and end up here. Um, if he had any dollars whatsoever, like say he had three dollars when he landed here, he'd have to pay as much as he possibly could, and he'd move back here and now he can't pay anything. So you move back to the closest space that you can afford to stay at at that point in time, paying along the way. So you could end up in a situation where, like, you land here, you don't have any food, so you have to move back here. You don't have enough gold, you don't have enough gold, and you move back here. So that's how that works, but you know, let's put green here for the sake of just moving on. I think now is a good time to talk about combat. Uh, let's say that uh, red moves forward and lands on this space with yellow. Whenever you land on a space with another player, you have to initiate combat. Again, if there are two players there, you choose which one you're gonna fight. Um, the person who's landing in that space is the attacker. Um, you resolve combat before you deal with cost. So even though there's a two food cost here, as soon as red moves into the space, he fights yellow. And then after the battle's over, he'll have to resolve the 
uh, payment to the space. Same thing would happen with uh, a space that has a doubloon cost. So, here's how combat works. First of all, the attacker gets to announce how many gunpowder tokens they want to spend. And gunpowder is going to give you uh, a modifier of plus one for each gunpowder you spend towards your die roll. So let's say that Red discards all three of his gunpowder. Uh, that's how it works is you declare how much you're using and it's gone regardless of the outcome of the battle, you've used up that gunpowder. So, at that point, the attacker is going to take the die, the combat die, and roll it. And whatever the number is, this one was a two, so it would be two plus uh, the amount of gunpowder you spent, which was three, so red's combat value is five. Um, now, yellow, as the defender, gets the opportunity to decide if they want to spend any gunpowder, if they have any. Um, yellow's just going to roll and see what happens. He thinks he's pretty confident he can beat a five. And he also rolled a two, so he did not beat the five. What that means is that yellow is going to lose that fight, and red gets to take something from yellow's one of yellow's holds, or take one of their treasures, or give them a cursed treasure. Those are the three things you can do if you win a combat. Um, whenever you take something from someone, you can only take the contents of a single hold, so you couldn't, you know, take... Like, if you had the wounds and two holds, you take one of the holds and you take it and put it into your own hold. If your holds are all full, then you have to dump something before you can take the thing that you're stealing from the other person. The rules are bizarre and ambiguous about how they're worded in that they don't say that you have the ability to um, not take something from the player. Say you have a full cargo and you do not want any of the things that that player has... It doesn't really say that you can choose not to take something from them. Um, it says you may either... You may take something from one of their holds, or you may take one of their treasures, or you may give them a cursed treasure. So that's kind of an ambiguous thing that you can just decide how you want to play that. I would say that if you do not want to take something from that person, then just don't. Um, but... Again, that is a matter of interpretation. Um, if a player had... This is a more finite rule here, but... If a player had this extra hold card, and they had something in the hold, if red chose to steal this from yellow, they would steal both the extra hold and everything inside of it, and it goes to him now, and now he's got this and everything that was in the hold. Um, that's how that works. Because uh, remember, you can take special power cards just like you could a face-down treasure. Um, now is another time to refresh you on the other special powers. This one would just give you a plus two to your combat roll regardless of everything else. And this one would allow you to re-roll that first die or the opponent's die. So. You have to accept whatever the re-roll is, but it does give you a chance if you roll a 2 and you're like, that's terrible, you can play this card. And it's not like you lose or anything, you just say, I'm activating my ability to re-roll the die kind of a thing. Uh, one last thing with combat. The die has one face that's just like a little explosion. If anybody rolls the explosion, they immediately win combat. Um, so if it happens during the attacker's phase, the defender doesn't even get the chance to spend uh, gunpowder, he just loses. Um, it doesn't matter how many gunpowder the attacker chose to spend, it's all gone anyway. Um, but that's what this side of the die is, it's an instant win. If the defender rolls it, then everything the attacker did was worthless and he just wins. And then, after that combat's been resolved, Red would then have to pay for... Uh, the food cost of landing on that space. If you didn't end up with any food, then you would have to move back to the further space where you can afford it, which would be Port Royal again. And remember, you can't have combat on the Port Royal space. Uh, other things to talk about. Uh, there are branching paths on the board. If you ever get to that place and you have to move 
forward either here or here. You choose which direction you go. Um, typically, going out and around gives you more opportunities to pick up treasure, but is going to also um, make your race take longer, so you're possibly going to lose points because someone else is going to get ahead of you that way. Um, but you're going to get more treasures, which potentially are worth points. Or they could be worth negative points. If you're moving backwards when coming up to uh, one of these splits in the path, you choose which way you go, just the same way as if you're moving forward. Another thing that might happen is if you um, move to a space and you have a shortage and you can't afford that space and you start moving backwards, uh, you will trigger a battle um, just like you would if you moved to land on a space with a player. Um, but you only will trigger a battle when you end up at the space where you're going to end up. So that is the space that you can afford to land at. So if, like, red were here, green moved here and he couldn't pay food and they started moving backwards, he's not landing on the space because he didn't have five coins, so he keeps moving and he doesn't have to fight red to find that out. He only has to fight yellow once he moves all the way back to that spot. Uh, realistically, those are all of the mechanics that are in the game. Um, you'll notice up here there's a red line that says negative five, uh, and then from this point onward there are numbers on all the spaces. Uh, the game is going to end as soon as someone has gone all the way around the map and ended the Port Royal space. If they end there and they still have a remaining action, that second action is ignored. Um, they just they finish the game and they stop there at Port Royal. Um, the person who ends the game is going to get 15 points for landing on that space. And then every space behind that is worth fewer points. So this one's worth 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2. And then everything behind this red line all the way around the map is worth negative 5. So if you don't make it at least to this space, you're going to lose 5 points at the end of the game. Otherwise, your score at the end of the game is going to be the number on the space where you ended up, plus uh, you'll get a point for every doubloon you have sitting in your hold, plus you'll have um, points on the treasures. Uh, modifiers that are like plus seven or minus two. So you're gonna add all those things up and whatever the result is, that's your score. Whoever has the highest score wins. So it is possible to win the game without actually winning the race. If you are tied in terms of score, then the person who is furthest down the uh, map is going to win. If you're still tied at that point, then share the victory. Uh, if you're playing a two-player game of Jamaica, you're going to have the ghost ship in play. That's going to be, realistically, could be any piece, I guess, but, you know, we're going to say it's the black pieces, the ghost ship. Um, and the way that that mechanically works is you will set up a sort of dummy player. It's going to have a hold with five doubloons and a hold with three doubloons. And they're going to have this special card that gives them plus two to attack. Uh, this special card can never be taken from the ghost ship. Um, any other treasures that they accumulate or doubloons that they end up in their hold can be taken in combat, but that one special power card is always with them, so they're always going to have an advantage in combat. The way the ghost ship works is he's going to go after everyone else is gone, um, you know, so there will be normal movement things happening. Um, the dice happen. Captain goes and he moves his ship. Uh, say he moves one forward and pays the food, and then he stays there, and then blue goes backward one, and then forward four, and stays there. So say the board looks like that. Then it would be the ghost ship's turn, and there are three things that can happen. The ghost ship will move forward, as per normal rules of, like, play, he, pretend he played a forward arrow twice card. Um, and so he'll follow the movements that's on the dice, He'll move forward if he's in last place. If he's in the front of the pack, he'll move backward. And if neither of those are true, then the captain will decide which way he moves. So, in this case, he's in last place. So he's going to move forward one. And he's going to fight the red player. Um, you'll have to resolve those attacks. Uh, if there are any decisions that need to be made during combat involving the ghost ship, the captain at the time is going to decide those decisions, such as taking something from somebody's hold. Um, if a player wins in combat against the ghost ship, they can take the contents of their hold, but again, they can't take this treasure. Um, 
if the ghost ship wins, again, they can take things from the other player and the captain will determine what they take. Uh, if a ghost ship ever lands on a treasure space, they'll take a treasure off the top of the deck, but they won't reveal it, it'll just be face down. And then on a future round, someone could choose to take that treasure from the ghost ship, but it will always be hidden information what that card is until someone takes it from it. And then they'll know what it is, but the other player won't kind of a thing. Um, so if the round looked like this, and honestly, what would have happened here, the ghost ship moved forward one, then he would have gone one, two, three, four, like that. Uh, the ghost ship never pays movement costs, so like... He wouldn't have to pay these three doubloons to be here. He wouldn't have to pay food to stay on a space. He just stops wherever his movement stops. If on the next round, uh, this was still what the board state looked like because he's in first place, he would have to move backwards. So let's roll some new dice. And it's four and four. So he would have to go one, two, three, four. He'd fight red again. And then he'd go one, two, three, four, back like that. Um, and again, if... He were not in first or last place. Whoever the captain is at the time will decide which direction he moves. Uh, so that's how the ghost ship works. Uh, honestly, he could end up, because he takes has the ability to take doubloons from other players, he could end up with a higher score than everyone else in the game, and then you'd feel pretty bad about losing to the ghost ship. Uh, or he could end up with a really low score if he ended up with a bunch of cursed treasure and nobody knew about it. So... Um, that's how you play a two-player game. You've got the ghost ship as a dummy player going in there, um, basically getting in your way all the time. And that's Jamaica! So, real quick, I wanted to mention that for the gameplay footage you're about to see, uh, we didn't quite do combat correctly, and that's because I looked at the rules after that and re reviewed what was going on. Um, when we played... What we did was um, the attacker declared how many gunpowder they wanted to play, and then the defender declared how many gunpowder they wanted to play, and then the attacker rolled, and then the defender rolled. What you're supposed to do is you're supposed to just have um, the attacker do gunpowder and then roll, and then the defender chooses if they want to spend gunpowder or not. So what we did kind of weakens the defender's ability to, like, they have less information to deal with. Um, really, I think you could play it both ways, and it doesn't matter that much, um, but it does save the defender the possibility of wasting their gunpowder if the attacker just rolls an instant win. So, uh, just throwing that out there as a note that we messed that up, um, I don't even really think it would have impacted anything in the gameplay, because there wasn't a ton of combat, um, but that's what it is. Um, if you look at the start of the video, you see how combat is supposed to work and, you know, do with that information what you will. Okay, so I, as the captain, I'm going to start by rolling these two dice. I roll a six and a four. So I'm going to look at my three cards. First, I'm going to draw three cards. I'm going to decide what order I want those in. You guys can be looking at your cards, too. I'm considering what things you might consider doing, but you won't really need to pick something until I put the dice out. And the treasure is only one person can get those? Yeah, as soon as you take it, you'll remove the token from the board and... Yeah, I'm sure of that. So it's impossible for me to acquire, because you guys will all have gotten there way before I will. And it depends, like... If I put the... Four down first, then someone will probably move forward four and get that. If I put the six down first, nobody has five gold, so you would lose all your gold and then you bounce somebody back. Somebody have movement on the other side. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm going to do uh, four and six. As soon as you know what card you're playing, we're going to kind of like reveal them closer to the center so that uh, we can see it on the camera. Okay, and uh, flip. So there we go. 
Um, moving forward four. One, two, three, four. Grabbing that treasure. I guess I can keep it in front of me. So I'll draw this treasure card. Okay. And I now have six holds. And I get six food. That's it. That's my turn. Okay. You want to bring me six balloons over there? Yeah. Okay. So I move forward four and get six food. So before you do that, before we have to Before that? Oh. Okay. So, um. I have no cans to play. You have no cans to play, so. Can I do better than two? No. no. So nothing happens. We are tied and we say better luck next time. Okay. Now you get your food. Sorry, I'll still move four. No! Oh! Uh, um, I believe in this circumstance, what's going to happen is you get to choose which one of those you fight. So. If we're looking at this it's exactly like Pirates Cove, <laughs> the situation where you can fight whoever you want, um, we have exactly the same thing. So, well, so if you wanted to steal my extra hold, you could certainly do that. So there's more incentive for you to attack me. All right, I'll attack you. Right. Convince me. Let's do it. Well, that's an instant win, so you get my hold. If you want it, or you could take this six food. What is money? Those are your options. I think I'm going to take your money because I'm going to get six food. Okay. Over the hold. Yeah. Okay. So this is going to a new hold. Yep. Because you can't stack them with your old hold. Okay. I be shopping. And then you get your food. And I go in another hold. And now you go. Oh, You're... maybe I should have taken the I other hold. I took the cannon. So maybe. I took the money. Okay. I gotta do it in turn order. Yeah, whatever. Okay. I was trying to speed things up. So You're the captain now. Moving. Okay. I'm the captain. We draw a card now. Yeah, we draw your card. Two. You've got three now. Yeah. And roll the dice. Wow. Four and six. So lay your cards and decide what order yeah. you want to put those down in. Thanks a lot, Bonnie. I've got no money. Sorry. Poor Levasseur hasn't even left the start line yet. <laughs> I'm he's go. making the smart decision. He's shopping up and he's... Six and four. Six and four. All right. Yeah. Um, Bonnie, I'm going to pull your card off the board. Sorry. No, it's fine. Just, I didn't even once realize. we played them, they don't need to be. Where like, do they go? Are they just, just they're discarded, discarded, and then once we use them all, we get them back. But... Okay. Uh, okay. Just, just obscenely this. expensive because there was a okay. really small oh. print run. Okay, so you're moving forward mm -hmm. six. Yeah. Well, the reason why that matters is because you wouldn't have that thing when they land on the same space as you. So that's why you don't take it. Mm -hmm. Like, the reason why it matters about not taking things until it's your turn is because they might land on the same space as you and fight you. And but nobody's going to land on the same space as me. Unless they move backward. That's true, they can't. But yeah. that's why it matters so, for the of us. We're making a video. I'm. You move six. I move six, then I fight, and then I move four. Because mm. it's two arrows. That is a good question. Yeah, you always immediately resolve combat if you land in the same space okay. with someone. Okay. Okay, so... Yeah. You have to pay those three. Nothing happens. <laughs> and now you move forward. Four. One, two, three. Four. Four. And yeah, the only you, you choose which way you want to go. So if you want to pay for food to take the shorter route, you could, or you come this way and you might get treasures. Yeah. Oh, so the treasure I can't get there? No, you have to be on, you have to be on the side of the thing to get to there because see the path is here and going up. Oh, so. okay. All right. So you're going there. Oh. Or there. <laughs> 
That's what that was the question. That was the answer. question. I, oh, and I passed the treasure. You like, passed that yeah, treasure. You yeah. passed this treasure. You didn't land okay. land on space, but you can go here or here right now. Yeah, I'm going lower. Okay, so pay three food. Yes. Okay. That was my stack of six food. Well, I'm trying to pick. That's up. why you don't do it ahead of time. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so you pick up six food and you move forward four. Yep. If somebody wants to move me up next to And you fight um, me. Alright. I guess I'm going to spend three cannons. I guess I'm going to allow you to do that. Four cannons, Four I cannons. guess, is what I have. Well, Fourteen. Fourteen. Unless I roll the instant win. I did not, so would you like my food or my hold? I guess I'll take your hold. You have my hold. Alright, I move forward six. Mm-hmm. Oh, I didn't get my cannons. Sorry. Yep. Hey. Why Wait. did you get cannons? Because that was my one, second two, thing. Three, oh. Four, five, six. Right. Yeah, that's fine. I move here. Uh, we have to have a fight. Okay. I spent the four cannons. Okay. Would you like to take my food? Yes, okay. I would like to take your food. You've got my food! I have all the food. Um, I have no gold, so I bounce backward to here. I pay my three food to stay there. And then I take four cannons. Okay. You're the captain now. I'm the captain. Five and five. Five. Just put them down. <laughs> but wait. All right. Yep. You take five gold. Mm-hmm. And you move forward five. Get a treasure. Mm. Go and keep that in front of you. I'm not sure if it matters, but like for the purposes of what we're doing. One, two. Was it the greatest two, thing ever? Four, five. Mm. Come on. I'm all right. My, all right. You know go. how this game is. Yep. Like I go. can't make a decision. All right. Six. I'm gonna spend my four cannons. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> go for it. Take your hold back. Uh, tied. Okay. <laughs> Nothing happens. Pay your three food. I then move five more, and I'll take the short path. <laughs> four food. Okay. Uh, I take five and five gold. Which is actually, I take five gold and then five gold. Yeah. So now, um, I take five gold. And I move five. One, two, three. So. Five. You're the captain. I'm the captain now. One and one. Miserable. Well, good thing I played that gold card. Does food all have to come from the same? Like now. Okay. Like, yeah. It just has to come out of your holds. Okay. That's important to note. Yeah. Like, obviously, there's the incentive to empty out holds as fast as you can, so you have room to put other things in, but yeah, you could spread it out over all the holds if you wanted wow. to. Awful. I'm pretty sure I'm going to do that. And you just have to have paid to enter your space once if you don't move out of it? Yeah. Oh, wait, sorry. It's okay. Um, Important strategic decisions. I mean, 
All right, let's go ahead and do Double this. Template. One and one. Yeah. So the <laughs> clear. All right. You take one food, one cannon. Yep. It's thrilling. Um, it's important to note if you put something in your extra hold, then and somebody, somebody steals it. They take it, the thing that's in the hold. Yeah. yeah. Um, I move one backward. I can't pay food, so I bounce back here and get this treasure. <laughs> um, oh, I forgot you can move either way. I forgot that was a thing. Which is going to let me have four cards now. And, well, you... What? It depends on what oh, arrow oh, you play. Oh, that's right. Yeah. So I played the red arrow. And that's, I move forward and bounce good. back, so I'm still there. So. I forgot that there were red cards. That was me. Okay. Um, I and move. Not very good at power one, racing. Pay five. <laughs> Take one food. Okay. I gain a food and a cannon. Nice. Me and Bonnie are on the same track. I'm the captain. Have fun. Oh no. He's the captain now. Doesn't get old. Six and one. What? That's pretty interesting. Alright, so. You know, relative player. So if I can't, if I don't have anything to put in my, if I don't have room in my hold, do I you just... You have to discard a thing to yep. put something in the hold. So, like, you'd probably throw out that cannon. Okay, that seems worth it, then. Okay. She hasn't played a card yet. I know, hold on. Well, Rob sort of reached for his card, I just want to make sure he didn't go, huh! Although, if you play something like cannon food, I guess it doesn't Wait, matter, uh, but it's true. Ugh. My cards are all stupid for this. Story of my life. Sorry. Hi -yup! Okay. Uh, I move forward six and get this treasure. Man, you're so good at treasures. Yep. I'm not good at racing, but I am good at drawing the worst treasures ever. Um, and I move backward one, which I have to pay three coins to stay there. That's it, right? Yeah. Okay. So I move forward six. I don't have any gold, so I move back one. Mm -hmm. I take that treasure. Was it the best treasure? Absolutely. And then I move forward one and still don't have this yeah. gold to stay there. So yeah. Move back one again. I discard a cannon. To take six gold. To take six gold. Yep. Yeah. And you discard the one food to take one gold, or do you... Discard the gold to yeah, like you, not take no, it. Like, no, you have to take it. You have to take it, so you would lose money okay. doing anything else. Yeah. Okay. We're all about shoes up in here. I move forward six. So that space where I have to spend food. Two food. Three food? Three food. <laughs> yep. Three food. And then I get a cannon. Should have taken that extra hold when I have a chance. Mm -hmm. You still can't take it. Just fight Rob. Land on, land on the same space as him. Just gotta land on the same space as me. Two and four. <sighs> Having four cards isn't really helpful. <laughs> throwing that out there. It seems like it would be really good. Well. I mean, it obviously depends on what kind of crap you draw. Because my hand is not really changing that much. Yeah. Or then two. I mean, you don't know what who's doing it. Does it change your opinion at all? <laughs> like, you're like, that works, but you hadn't even put them down yet, so... <laughs> so you didn't know what order the things were happening in. Either oh, way, sorry. it works. Okay. Um, I need to actually make an informed but decision. I feel, I feel like I was guessing... I was I was planning for four and then two. I think he said four and two. I did not until I put them down. Um... Are you ready? Yeah. Okay. Hup! 
Get yourself four cannons. Mm -hmm. And a dollar. Two dollars. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm gonna move. One, two, three, four. Pay three dollars. That's fine. And then I'm gonna get two cannons. I move four. I can't pay two food. I bounce back and pay three gold. Five gold. Five, five gold. gold. Oh, I guess Eight. I'll have paid three out of here and then, and then two, two out, of, out of there. Yeah, so, so yeah. yeah. Um, so that effectively consolidates. And then you get two food. And then I get two food. Did you? Is that the two yeah, food? that's the two food. Okay. Um, I take four food. And then I move forward to where I spend that four food. Making headway. Mm -hmm. Five and one. Pick an order. Oh, hold on. I'm I not upset. Being impatient. Just. Oh man, am I out of negative point land? Is that where I landed? Yeah. Man, I'm just gonna stay here for the rest of the I game. mean, unless you play any backward red arrows, oh, no. in which case. <laughs> or if you move forward and can't pay food, can't pay can't money, pay and you just bounce back to here. Bounce all the way back. Like, actually, you'd bounce back to there. Oh no, it could happen. And that would be awful. Okay, sorry. Okay. Are you doing five and one or one and five? I You're still thinking. Sorry, I didn't know if you had decided because you're like cards ready to go. All right, I'm gonna do one and five. Okay. okay. <laughs> Excellent. Great. Great. That's good. That's the great, best great, great. decision. <laughs> you are great at making these choices. I will just. I wholeheartedly approve. That, I don't like that. It means that Josh is going to get that treasure because of you. I'm sorry. Okay. It's okay. So I'm going to go back one. And then, and then forward five. You have to pay five. I'm going to. And then okay. one, two, three, four, five. Okay. Pay another five. Well, you have to fight Rod first. Oh. Okay. And then I'm going to. My cannons. I spend two cannons also. Okay. Eight. Twelve. You lost that fight. So, you have to either move back to here or here. But first I get to take a thing. Oh, yeah. If I take... If you take all her food, she gets a treasure. That's true. But... <laughs> Treasure's not always good. I'm gonna take your food. All of it? Well, I take one hold's worth of goods. Wait, 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 wait. before you do that, if you took her money, then she'd have to bounce out of that space because it always takes place in order of you fight and then you do the thing. Yeah. So she wouldn't have the money to stay in that space and she'd have to bounce back. I know. I thought about it. Okay. Oh, right. I see. I was making sure that so everybody she understood the stay order here? of operation. Yeah, she could stay there. Oh. But you have to pay the money to stay. We there. shot at each other and then okay. she has to pay money. Okay. Like, that just went, as yeah. a point of example, that's how the order of operations works. You yeah. have to fight, and then you take care of the yeah. cost of the space. I see. I um, okay. Okay. So that's Bonnie, and then Are I you? move forward, oh. or I get one gold. So, and then I move forward five. I pay two food to stay in that space. Pretty good. I get one cannon and five food. When somebody passes, we play out the full round. Dice for Rebecca. Uh, yeah, because we would have all played our things. So okay, we, we, like that just continues enough. Like, yeah. Just to be clear. Okay. He hasn't it's, gone yet. Uh, yeah. So like, okay. I move back one and forward five. Where Where were you? I was. Yeah. Okay. So one, 
Yeah, yeah back, back one, one. And then forward five. Wait, no, I was here. Sorry. Okay, so you pick, move back Basically, one from there. Yeah, he just. I moved back picture. one and one. Okay, so you two, had to pay the three, three food four. to move back one. Yeah. Okay, just make sure yes. that we're all doing it right. All right. And then. Now you get a treasure. Yeah. Five and one. <laughs> Are you gonna do the one five like Bonnie? You know I'll appreciate it. <laughs> Consider it the greatest move. If I stay there, do I have to keep paying? No. Okay. Um, I'm going to do 5-1. Okay. Are you across the finish line? Yeah. yeah. Does that mean the game's over? The game will end. The game will end this turn. He doesn't need to tell you I that. I did not need to tell you that, but yeah, I'm going to cross the finish line. Well, that so answers that question. I could beat you despite being way back here. It's okay. With my seven dollars. I really don't care. <laughs> so. Well, then that's that. That's that. That is that. Okay, let's play these cards. I move forward five. One, two, three, four, five. Pay two food. Then I move back one. I get five gold. Uh, and then I move forward one and have to pay four food. Uh, I get five. Five and, five and one. And one. Uh, I get five cannons. And one gold. Those aren't worth points in the, the game. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Why this did you take the... all them cannons? <laughs> That's the only thing that gave her gold. I... She didn't have anything that moved her forward. All right, so one. Oh wait, can I? Nope. No, too late. <laughs> Take that, Happy. Uh, oh no, I didn't have anything that moved me forward. I had something that moved me backward. Backward. Sure. Backwards that five, and then. No, mm. be forward five and backward one. That would have been significantly more points for you. No, it, no, because the arrows the wrong way. Green mm. arrows are forward. No. <laughs> okay, so you, you take your one gold. I want my one gold. Here's your one gold. Okay. Um, now we all count up our score. You and I lose five points. You get two plus your coins. Five plus, um, plus, plus your treasure. Eight. My score is going to be. Mm, Sorry. Mm, Would you have Bonnie? Eight? <laughs> eight. <laughs> Fourteen. 13. 20. <laughs> Despite being way back here. <laughs> I'm in second place. <laughs> and that's Jamaica! Are you listening to steel drums in your head right now? I am. Because we're talking about Jamaica. Okay. Um... What do you think about Jamaica? I genuinely dislike this game. <laughs> Why do you genuinely dislike this game? Uh, I think it's strongly overrated. I agree. Um, I think we should start out by talking about the good things this game has going on for it. All right. I think that's valid. Um, this game is uh, very attractive. Um, you can see the colorful board, the colorful box. Yep. The box kind of looks like a treasure chest. Yep. Um, it's got, uh, an insert with a place for everything that comes in the game. Mm -hmm. Which can be good or bad, depending, but... Bad if you want to sleeve the cards, because yep. then they don't fit yep. anymore, and it's too bad. Yep. Um, but the cards are also kind of a weird shape, so maybe you wouldn't be able to sleeve them anyway. Yep. Um... The cards are a large, interesting, unique format. Um, again, colorful artwork. Um, if you line up all the action cards, they make a big panorama, yeah. so that's yep. interesting. Yep. Um, I don't have a problem with the iconography in the game. It's very clear and makes sense what everything does. Yep, I like, agree. Green arrow is forward, red arrow is backward. Gold cannons is gold. are cannons. Cannons are cannons. Yep. Um, food is food. Food is food. Uh... The, um, the coins are fine. I, I think they're good. 
in terms of component quality because they're thick mm -hmm. um, and they look like coins. Um, in our game that we played, we swapped out... And used my fancy metal coins. Used metal coins, and I think yeah. that makes the game better, Yeah, but people aren't going to just have doubloons hanging around. You should. So, I mean, well, I mean, if you do have doubloons sitting around and you want to play Jamaica, I mean... Use them. That's going to make the game a little bit... A little more thematic. I mean, it's going to make it seem fancier. Yeah. Um, boat pieces are nice. Sculpted yeah. boats. That's what I was going to say, yeah. Uh, and there's a slot for every boat in the insert. Uh, so... Are you out of good things? And there's a uh, large wooden dice. Um, I don't really like the dice, but okay. Well, I mean, they're not like generic D6. So that's true. They're, that's another component production quality thing. Sure. Um, so that's in terms of it's an attractive game. Uh, the game is simple. Sure, that's it's true. It's a family game. It's very easy to teach people how to play. You can play it with kids. I yep. don't see why not. Uh, except they might throw tantrums because of what the game is. Yeah. Um, but the game is not a complicated game. Once you understand the game, you can explain it very easily. Yep. Um, so that's another plus as going for it. Um... I think I might be out of good things to say about it. I didn't have that many good things to say about okay. it, so... Um, this is a race game. Indeed. That is that is what it is pitched as. Yes. You can win this race game by not winning the race. It's true. You could do very poorly, in fact, in the race and still win. Yep. Theoretically, you could, you could just do almost nothing and still win because of the way things are yep. through random chance. Um, so I think that's a bit problematic that it it's not like a race to the finish and whoever wins, wins. It's a race to the finish, but then do some math and see who wins. Yep. Um, and that's a little obnoxious. Uh, I'm not saying the game would be better if it didn't have victory points in it if because then it would be more superfluous it yeah would be just then it'd just be move forward yeah um but i would say if you're looking for a race game play formula d i agree because i think that is I a think much more formula uh, d is by far my favorite race game so much yeah a much closer um mechanics matching the type of game that's trying to do yeah uh, because the mechanics in this game is action selection. Mm -hmm. uh, you have three cards to choose from. You have to play one of them, and you're gonna do the two things on that card, kind of regardless of whether or not it helps you. You just that's what you're gonna do. Yep. And through the very nature of how that works, because you play one of your three cards and then you draw another card at the end of your turn, you are gonna... stuck yeah. Yeah. with the same two, two cards in the things. next turn. Yeah. So if you are in a situation where you can't get anything done, because of another way the, me the mechanics work in the game, you will sit there and just play cards, just playing cards until you get a card that actually helps you. Yeah. Filling your hold with useless junk and dumping junk out of your hold because you can't merge cargo holds, so... Which is one of the things that really annoys me about this game. Like, I understand why it's a thing mechanically in the game that you can't merge holds. But it's also like, there's one doubloon in that hold. Why can't I dump these eight doubloons in there with it? Like, that's stupid. Um, I think my biggest problem with this game is its use of currency to move mm -hmm. or use of currency to stay where you're trying to go. Yeah. Um, this idea of, like, everywhere you go is kind of taxed. Mm -hmm. with either, either food, or, food gold. or gold. Yeah. And... If you can't pay that tax, you just move back until you can pay a tax. You just move back basically to where you were just at because the, the non-paid spaces are sp spread out enough that it's not like you can... Yep. Like, incrementally work your way forward... 
you basically just have to sit there until you gain enough gold or food to move forward mm -hmm. and then get a movement card to move forward and someone rolls the dice needed to the space where you're trying to go. Yep. Um, and that's a lot of things that add up to situational luck that I don't really buy into. Yeah. Um, this idea that... <sighs> It's a race, but you can't go forward because you don't have money. Yeah. You can't go forward because you don't have food. Yeah. Um, so that bothers me. Uh, I don't... One thing I was thinking... I was trying to decide whether uh, the captain has, like, this kind of odd advantage or not in the game i don't really because really, everybody gets to become the captain but like you know you roll the dice and then you choose what order they go in yeah i mean you, you definitely have a significant advantage on your turn but... but i couldn't feel like if that mechanically doesn't work because it's basically like you're you might just end up waiting for you to become the captain again to get yeah. anything done yeah. and then you're just kind of and then you may roll dice that don't help you or may not have cards that help you mm -hmm. so it's definitely problematic in that way, I would agree. Um, variants. I saw some. a lot of people have talked about, like, you do a morning action and an evening action, mm -hmm. and the way the game tells you to play it is do both your actions. And, you know, if you run into someone along the way, you have to fight them. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people suggested, what if everybody does their morning action, then everybody does their evening action? Yeah. Um, could be better, I don't know. I think it would make it harder for you to plan what you're trying to do, mm -hmm. so it might be more luck-dependent, and that makes it more like a programmable movement game like Robo-Rally. Sure. Um, but I would rather play Robo-Rally than Indeed. this. So if yep. you're trying to make it a programmable movement game where random chaos can come in and mess up your turn, and, oh, that's so ridiculous, uh, Robo-Rally is a better game than this for that... For that purpose. Yeah. yeah. Um, but they're not... Robo Rally is also a race game. Yep. Um, it's a race that's not like a linear track, but it's a race to go get things and get back. Yep. You know, like that's that's what Robo Rally is. Yep. I think it accomplishes that far better than this. Robo Rally also uses cards to program what you're trying to do on your turn. Mm -hmm. So you're making decisions in a set amount of time rather than rolling dice and who knows what you're going to get. And I think that works a lot better than this. I agree. Um... Combat. Yep, I was waiting for combat, because it is the thing that I hate the most. Awful! Oh, it's um, so bad. So, it just, now, uh, you know, it is very clear to point out that what we did in our video wasn't accurate. What you do is, as the attacker, you um, declare how many cannons you're going to spend, then you roll your die, then the defender goes, okay, I can either spend cannons or roll my die like you can you wait until you see the full result we mm. just like did do you want to spend cannons do you want to spend cannons okay um so the defender we weakened the defender's position in that sense but i don't know that really i, I don't think it matter. makes a difference i don't think it makes a difference because it's a six-sided die yeah two four six eight ten and automatic success automatic success yeah um and because of what i just described Whenever someone rolls the automatic success, they win. So if the attacker rolls it, then the defender just goes, well, okay, I don't need to spend cannons. I don't need to try. I, yeah. just, I just lose. If the defender rolls it, then everything the attacker did was wasted. So he did all this planning, like, okay, well, I'm going to spend these cannons knowing that you have cannons kind of a thing. And then, oh, well, you roll the explosion, so yeah. you win. Never yeah. mind. Yeah. Um, the bigger issue that I have with that, like, the automatic success thing bugs me, but not as much as the fact that the numbers are just so disparate. Like, if one person rolls a two and one person rolls a six, like, the person who rolled a six is just going to win. And that's not even, you know, like, there's an eight and a ten. Like, it's pretty unlikely that you're going to spend that many cannons on that roll, the way you, at the rate you get cannons in the game. I mean, like, knowing that, you could hoard cannons. You could. But then you don't have the ability to move forward because your holds are blocked up with cannons yeah. and not food or gold. <laughs> and you may never be able to land on a space with someone else to attack them anyway, so it's just bad. Like, um, the combat system in this is absolutely miserable. You know, I just... I think the worst thing about combat is that you don't get 
to choose. Like, you yeah. land on the same space as someone else, there's going to be combat, you have to roll the dice. Yeah. If you... If you win, then... The way the rules are worded are kind of weirdly ambiguous. It says you may choose one of these three options. You can take something from their hold, you can take their treasure, or you can give them a cursed treasure. Um... I guess you, like, if you don't want any of those things, because if you take something, you have to, and you, all of your holds are full, you have to dump, dump something, something. Yeah. And you can't take something that's the same thing as what you're dumping. Yeah. So you could actually hurt yourself because you land on the same space as someone and had to fight them. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it doesn't really technically say that you have the choice to just not take anything. Yeah. Um, it, you know, the ambiguous nature of you may choose one of the three things. It's kind of like, well, can I choose not of, choose one of, of those, those three things? things? Yeah. Um, and you know, if they have an empty hold, you choose to take what's in the empty hold, but then you have another ambiguous nature of, do you have to replace the thing that came out of the empty hold yeah. into your hold because you take what's in their hold and yeah. put it in your hold? Yeah. Um, <laughs> It's just, it's just annoying. Yep. And that's how I feel about the game in general. It's just annoying. Yeah. It's not like coming back to Formula D. Yeah. Like combat in Formula D are danger checks, you know? So mm -hmm. you're next to somebody else. You both roll a die real quick. Did either of you roll... A 20. A 20, or maybe it's a 19 or a 20. Like, it depends on difficulty that you're playing at and yeah. what variant rules you're using and all that but you know like did either of you roll a high number no okay well you're safe like there wasn't danger but if you both and then if you rolled it like okay you each take a point of damage like you're done move on mm -hmm. you know it's it's so fast and simple and this is just like slow and painful and just bogs the game down and is annoying um we can talk about player count uh, we played this as a two-player game. We thought it was trash. Yeah, it's, there's zero interaction. Like There's a ghost ship that, yeah. if, you know, the ghost ship, if it's in the lead, it moves backward. If it's in the in last place, it moves forward. Yeah. If it's neither of those things, then whoever's the captain decides what it does. Yeah. It's got a severe advantage in attack power, and you can't ever take that away from it. Yeah. Um, so it's just there to, like, hinder you and get in your way and yeah. make it so you can't progress along the board um and i seem to remember that when we played this as two players like it didn't even matter because you know that first turn we both ran into each other and then after that it was pretty much we just were in our own separate places and the ghost ship was chasing us and we were like whatever <laughs> yeah um you've played this with like i played this with six with players six the people. max yeah garbage yeah it was terrible it was three hours long yeah um, and now I understand that it's always going to depend on who you're playing with, and I was playing with strangers, um... Who were slow. Who were slow. Yeah. And, but this game does present a structure that does give people the ability to think they need to make interesting, difficult, time-consuming decisions when really there's not that no. much complexity going on. Just play one of your three cards and move on, like, who cares? Um, but... It was a lot of people sitting there mulling over all of their options of all the ramifications of what happens if I move forward. Well, then I have to pay all my gold and bounce backward, and then I'd have to fight someone, and then I'd have to do this, and then I wouldn't get this. And, yeah. Um, it's, you know, it doesn't play well with two. It doesn't play well with six. So I thought, okay, well, four must be the ideal number for this. So I was like, we're going to give it another shot with four players, and that's the one we filmed. And it was, man, it was just so average. Yeah, it was the least painful yeah. of those things. Yes, yeah. but it was not interesting, and it wasn't like there was the right balance of conflict versus you know, yeah, not too much chaos or whatever. It was just people rolled things and then they stopped moving and then they started moving again once they had things and they just went yeah and through you know sheer matter of how things worked i think if i remember how the gameplay went i didn't have resources for a majority of the game i was way behind everyone else 
I think I ended like over here somewhere. Yeah. And I got second place. Yeah, you were either second or third. I, I don't second. remember. And because I just like had treasures that I picked up yeah. at the coves. And I had decided to just be like, whatever. I'm going to see if I can win the win the race and lose the game by not picking up any points and not having gold in my hold. And I got there and I think I won by like a couple of points and was like, oh, okay, well I guess that's good. At least I won a race game by winning the race, otherwise I'd be angry. Um, yeah, just a lot of things that I don't like about this game. So, I mean, I feel like it's just kind of like generally boring. Yeah. Um, and luck-based in a way that like you can't really fix it by like saying, well, then like instead of drawing three cards, have all your cards. Well, then it's really slow mm -hmm. and people are all just going to do the same thing. Yeah. Or um, discarding the two cards that you don't use and shuffling and drawing three so that you at least have change in your hand would be a big deal, but that's also going to slow the game down. But I don't think that there's enough interesting decisions in the cards you play. Yeah, I agree. And that is a problem because it's like, oh, well, I've already played my card that gives me gold, so it's gonna, I'm just going to do nothing for a while. And, yeah. and I just don't think that there's much going on. Um... It's a game that sells you on its thematic depth, but, like, it's not... We've already mentioned the things that don't make sense about it. Like, the story is that Captain Morgan is the governor of Jamaica, and he's invited all his pirate buddies to come live there, and then 30 years later, you're celebrating that event by racing around the island to see who's the best pirates. Yeah, nonsensical. And then... And this island isn't really what Jamaica even like looks like I, it's kind of it is the in shape that, of jamaica it is in that it is an island yeah um that we already talked about the things about like thematically why does it cost you money to like you, you stop at the ports is what the thematic nature of that is but like why are you stopping at the ports in a race yeah constantly like um, Especially, like, my favorite one is that you could be here and go to here. Like, you went to port and then moved two spaces and went back to port again. Um, <sighs> a lot of things I don't like. And this one is maybe a personal thing. Oh, I was waiting for you to talk about your least favorite thing. This rule book, it's unique. It's not a book. It's not a rule book. It's a poster... It's a rule map. That unfolds, and yes, the areas of interest are in islands in the map, and you go from one island to the next to look at, you know, where things are. And then there's a continent down at the bottom that has, like, all these finite rules that, you, that aren't in the main rules. Um, so if you have a question about how things work, you have to unfold this stupid thing, because it and takes up too, too much table space to have yeah, open. Yeah, and then you have to navigate the map then to figure out where it is. Look around, trying to figure out the area that pertains to what you're talking about, and then if it's not in the basic rules, you have to go down to the continent and look again through the finite rules at the bottom, and... Yep. It just doesn't work. Now, if you play this game enough, you know the rules because they're not that complicated and it's not that big a deal, but basically you need to have someone there who's, who knows, oh yeah, you can't do that because of this. Um, but looking it up in the middle of a game is terrible. Yeah, it's a nightmare. And I don't want to get upset about them like trying something different because it is different from any other rule book, but it's just it makes the game worse. Yeah. Um, it would be so much nicer if it were just a small pamphlet-sized rule book where each page is just, this is everything pertaining to this specific action. Do yep. this. this is, these are all the rules you need to know. And it's not like that. It's a weird pictograph. Yep. And, um, so... Uh, yep. <laughs> I knew you were going to talk about that. This game has a fairly high ranking on BGG. It is... Sought after. As soon as I played it three times, I put it up for trade and said I'm done with it. As soon as I played it twice, I put it up for trade. I'm pretty sure after the it. first time I played it, because um, I because I really wanted to get this for a long time when yeah. it was out of print. Yeah. And I was like, oh man, the Jamaica game. Like I like racing games. Pirates. You know, I I like pirates. I don't know any pirate games that I like because pirate games just always seem to be bad to me. Mm. Um, and. 
Then, you know, they reprinted it. I was like, yes, gonna get Jamaica. Yeah, I pre-ordered it, so... Got it and showed up and we busted it out to play it. And we were just like, this is miserable. <laughs> like, what is happening? Um, it, it, as soon as I put it up for trade, daily, we got trade requests for it. It's yeah. like people every day contacting it. Oh, I'll give you this game for Jamaica. So people really want Jamaica. Yeah. Um... I don't know why. Yep. I can only assume it's because it has really nice components and it looks like it's going to be a fun game. And someone out there is having fun with it. Yeah, for sure. But I'm not sure why it is that they are having fun with it and there are better games. It was recommended for the Spiel des Jahres in 2008 when it came out. Celtus won that year. I think Celtus is a much more interesting way better, game yeah. than this. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I don't have a lot else to say about it other than I don't like it and I don't think that people should get it. I think that really it needs to stop being as popular as it is. Um, and I'd give it like a 4 out of 10. And that's mostly for components. Yeah, yeah. Sounds about right. I think that's about what I gave it. So, Like, I let you talk a lot because I think my, my comments on this are already public record because they're on our Tumblr, I think. Maybe that's not true. No, I think I wrote about it. Did you? Yeah. Because oh, I, I wrote about it after the six-player game. Mm. So, you know, I think this might be GameWorks' only, like, big-box game. Uh, like, they're usually, like, small card games. They're all, like, family-oriented games. Um, and... I... It's probably their best effort as a game. Um, so, I wouldn't want to discourage them from, you know, they obviously put in a lot of effort into making components that stand out and look good. Yeah. And it'd be nice if they continue that approach, but I think they need to do it with a game that, um, has better gameplay is yeah. More, yeah. more of a game worth playing. So that's how I feel about Jamaica. There you go. We don't like Jamaica. I mean, we like the country of Jamaica, but we don't like this game, Jamaica. Hmm. Do you think this game would be better if it was, like, push cart themed Because they'd have a bobsled team? Yeah, yeah, or if it was a bobsled game? Like, do you think that'd be better? What if John Candy was on the box? I think it couldn't hurt. 